Hello, this is my DFE presentation uh, about same-sex parenting. So before my experience, uh, I'll give you a little background information. I had little to no diversity exposure or experiences until I went to college. I grew up in a very small uh, rural town um, with no diversity whatsoever. It, and so when I went to college, it was kind of my, it was, it, I felt my mind was opened up a lot. Um, and it, in a great way, I loved it. I love everything about it. Um, and I felt I needed to know more just about, about everything and everyone. And then one day, um, I met this guy and we started dating and eventually one day he asked me if, to come and meet his family and he seemed a little nervous and so I asked him I'm like what what's going on why are you so nervous he's like well I need to tell you something about my family before you meet them I'm like okay my sister and brother are adopted from Korea, and my sister is a lesbian. And I think he was nervous because he knew I had little exposure to diversity growing up, and he thought maybe I wouldn't accept his sister and her lifestyle. He couldn't have been more wrong. His sister is an amazing woman and an amazing mother. Who loves her daughter deeply. When my husband's sister and her wife told us they were thinking about having a baby, I was so excited for them. I was also filled with a ton of questions. I had to know more. I had to. I was very uncomfortable with this, um, asking them some of these questions. Um, I almost felt like I was kind of offending them by asking some of these questions and engaging in a conversation about this with them and just what their expectations were as a, as parenting and stuff. Um, they told us that they were kind of about their IVF or in vitro fertilization journey. And I was just fascinated with it. I think that our medical advances have come so far and that it's for something good that how could you not be happy for them or wanting to go have a start a family? So this is kind of where my ignorance or lack of diversity kind of plays out. I had no idea about the challenges and struggles that they would encounter all because they wanted to have a family of their own. So if you look at this, it kind of shows you a breakdown of states that same-sex couples can adopt, states where they can't adopt, or states where they can, it's not just same-sex couples, but people, in individuals in the LGBT community as well. Um, adoption however doing a little more research and just from talking with my the two couples that i interviewed adoption for same sex couples is happening in growing numbers they have friends that are adopting um they also said that although lesbian couples can have children it's the the gay male couples that are doing a majority of the adopting um and another thing that i found out too is that Adoption laws differ from state to state, and for these couples that are trying to have families, location plays a big part in where they start their families. For instance, um, you can see like Alabama. My sister-in-law told me that they would never move to Alabama because that state just does not, their views and their tolerance for same-sex couples parenting is just not not there. 
So another thing I learned is parental rights. Who has them? It's so, the law is so it's it's crazy. So they have this thing called second parent adoption. And it allows a second parent to adopt a child without the first parent losing any parental rights. The child will then have two legal parents. This was mind blowing to me because here are these people, these individuals want a child and they have to fight so much for it. It was just, they're not even being recognized as parents for some of them. So, Here's the first couple that I interviewed, Jen and Chris. They live in Southern California. They live here because California is so liberal and open-minded that they can live there comfortably and their, their lifestyle and everything is widely accepted. They have a four-year-old daughter via in vitro fertilization and a sperm donor. What I love about their story is that Jen my sister-in-law, she is adopted from Korea. They took her eggs and fertilized it with an Italian um, heritage sperm donor because Chris, her family is Italian. And then Chris carried the child, Gia. So I thought it was just great. It's a great mix for them and it, it works out so wonderfully. They were very open about their IVF journey with me. Um, and I thought it was really cute too that Jen goes by mama and Chris goes by mommy. So they have their, their own little, their way of differentiating, which I thought was super cute. So some of the challenge, like I mentioned, the location was a factor in where they, they raised their family. Jen is originally from Minnesota, and Chris is originally from Connecticut. So them living in a very liberal state was very helpful. In, and it was their, it's what they wanted. They had to find somewhere to live that adapted to their own lifestyle as well. Um, one of the things that Jen told me about was, especially when Gia was born, when they were filling out forms, a lot of the forms, you know, the, the um, like the birth certificate and school forms and doctor forms, they all assume straight parents. So sometimes it can be problematic for proving parental rights, which, like I said, comes into play with that um, second parent adoption. Another thing I found interesting too, that Jen was talking about, if you, some the states that don't recognize these same-sex couples with their child, say you're going on a road trip and you travel from one state to another and you get into a car accident and you need medical attention. Well, if that's a state that doesn't recognize the same-sex parents, it would be hard for them to get medical information about their own child because of the state laws. That's just... I just couldn't believe that. Another thing um, that Jen and Chris talked about was finding jobs that have family-friendly benefits. So some, you know, a lot of the more conservative companies, they may not have policies in place for same-sex parents or LGBT, you know, parents and their leaves and medical benefits and all that. Um, another thing that they kind of touched base on with me was discrimination. It's not only towards them, but it's also towards the child as well. However, they haven't experienced any discrimination because Gia is in, she's in preschool right now. So it's very, it's a very small kind of class that she's in. And um, so far everybody's been really great, but they are a little concerned about as she gets older, will she be bullied for having two moms? Which is a huge concern with my with the other couple that I also interviewed. Some of the positives, however, that Jen and Chris touched base on, they love their daughter deeply, support her, encourage her to be herself. Um, and like I said, employers are now embracing 
family-friendly policies for all family types. You're hearing about this more and more in the news and more and more companies are getting on board with this recognition of the new definition of a family. Because they are two moms, Jen thought that sometimes parents feel a little more comfortable asking them to watch their kids at like planned events, at planned times or on random times. And she's not sure if this would be the same case if it were two dads or if it were a heterosexual dad there, you know, would the mom feel comfortable asking them to watch their children? But she feels that because it's two moms, people will tend to be a little more comfortable with it. So here we have Jennifer and Jamila. They also live in Southern California. They have a five-year-old son via in vitro fertilization and sperm donor as well. Similar to Jen and Chris. However, they weren't quite as open about their IVF journey. I think it had to stem from a little bit of family resistance that they were experiencing. Um, but the good news is now they're expecting baby number two with the same process. Some of their challenges, again, location was a huge factor. They're all, you know, when where they started their family. Um, Jennifer is from Connecticut as well. Um, and Jamila, she's a native of California. Discrimination against them and their child. Um, they've experienced this just a little bit. It's mainly towards them, not so much their son. Um, they had a couple instances where um, a couple of the parents, you know, like one or two parents found out that they were, that their son had two moms and so they wouldn't really allow their their child to, inter to kind of intermix or w wouldn't go to their son's birthday party. You know, it was just, it's unfortunate. Um, so, and like I said, Jamila's family had a little bit of resistance about them starting a family. They were, I think they were more concerned about the child and how it would be, you know, would the child be bullied for having two moms? Why, you know, how are you doing this? There's no dad. That, so all that kind of stuff. They, they were adamant about it though. They said, no, listen, you, we're having this family, whether you, you know, you can be a part of it or you can't. So some of the positives, again, um, they're expecting their second baby. Um, and now with the, now that they're pregnant with their second child, the resistance from that side of the family has become less now that they've gotten, you know, to know and see how they are as a family and to see how, how they're thriving and they're just so positive and, and Julian, he's just so, he's so happy. Um, they have a very supportive, and loving network of friends. They're, the the way they talked about their their friends, it was like it's their second family or their their friends are their family. Um, another thing they do with their son is they use a lot of children's books that are available about gay parents and um, to make it seem like you know it it's a it's a normal thing. It's totally fine. He shouldn't um, feel bad for having two moms. He shouldn't feel left out. And um, it's just to help him understand and know that there's many different ways um, to view a family. Uh, so what I've learned from this experience, the one th thing um, that parents, new parents can ask themselves, which I thought was was great, no matter race, gender, sexual orientation, sexual identity, ethnicity. When we are starting a family, the one question we all ask ourselves is, will I be a good parent? Another thing um, that I learned is there is still resistance and discrimination when it comes to same-sex parents. Uh, where they live can sometimes be a challenge, and that's so unfortunate. And the fact that they're having to fight to have a family is it's just so sad and i just i can't understand why these they they just want to love a child just like all of us another thing that i kind of learned too was that uh gay parents tend to be more vo motivated more involved and more committed because they choose to become parents 